All right, so let me show you a feature in MariaDB that allows you to keep track of all the changes in your data automatically. This is called System Version Tables. And so let's say we are building a to-do application. So we will have to create a new table, items. This is, by the way, the example that I use in my upcoming book uh, on MariaDB. It's called MariaDB for Developers. Uh, go check it out. And we are going to need these with a serial primary key. Uh, here, serial means just uh, big int and signed, not null auto increment. So I don't need to type any of that. Then we need the title of this uh, item. Let's do that, var char 200, maybe not null. And Dawn is going to be a Boolean, not no default false. And that's enough. So we have some columns here. These are column definitions. And after that, parentheses, we can add all the table options, right? Like engine, maybe you know that one. MariaDB has several storage engines. But the one we're interested in is with system versioning. And just with that, MariaDB is going to keep track of all the changes to the data that you stored in these columns automatically, right? So um, before we continue, uh, I'm using the MariaDB uh, client, the command line, running on the same uh, machine that where the server is. And it has this command. This is not uh, a SQL command, right? This is for this tool only, where, for example, I can run any shell command, like I can list all the files in this Linux machine in the root directory, right? Uh, likewise, I can maybe show the date, the current uh, date in this machine is February uh, 7, okay? So let's say that day we started working on something new. So insert into items title value, uh, let values actually, let's say fix bug. We're doing some bug fixing. And uh, you should be able to see that here. Select all from items. All right, so it's ID number one, and it's not done yet, right? Zero is false, which is what we uh, set as default. Mm, very good. And let's say uh, two days go by, and I have a script for that, a shell script that I created before. Add days, and it accepts the number of days that I want to add to the system time. So. Now it's February 9, right? So two days from here. And that day we finished, we fixed, finally fixed that bug. And we uh, update items set down equals true, where ID equals one. So we mark that row as done. And we can see that here, All right? It's done now. Good. So that's the current state of the data, right? Now, because we activated system versioning, we can see all the changes. Now, we only have one, and it happened between uh, this day, February 7, and February 9. So let's say we're interested in what was the state in February 8. All right, so one day before we did the, the change. So we can do that by adding here for system time, a self, and then the date, February 8, I think it's where I said, yeah. And we can see that it was not done yet. Or we can ask, hey, what was uh, happening in the middle of January? Well, that row didn't even exist, empty set. Uh, and you can do more things. Uh, you could do, for example, something like from to, and specify the dates here, right? I'm not going to do it right now. Or you can show all of the um, rows with all the history. And if you do that, then you'll see all the changes, basically, all this, the, the, the states in which the row was. That's automatically handled by MariaDB, which is uh, pretty nice. Now, you can imagine that as you continue to add rows and modify these rows, uh, these tables are going to grow uh, more than what you would expect uh, normally without system versioning. In fact, it's going to uh, add all the rows, all the changes into the same table, the same file in the operating system. I can actually show you that file. So if we go list uh, var lib mysql demo, uh, this is where the demo schema or database 
uh, files live in the hard drive. And I'm interested particularly in this file here, which is the InnoDB data file. If you want to learn more about all these concepts, uh, key concepts in MariaDB, I invite you to watch the MariaDB 101 webinar where I explain uh, these concepts and more. But the important thing is that there's just one file, right? So MariaDB is going to read, even if you run something like this, it's going to read all those rows, including the history I can show you with explain. So if you go to the type, uh, join type is that, that means like what MariaDB is going to be uh, reading or doing to find data is all of the rows. So it's a full scan uh, that could slow down some of the queries in your application. But fortunately, MariaDB has the concept or supports the concept of partitions, and that's dividing this file here into many physical files, then uh, queries are going to be uh, much faster. So let me show you that. First of all, I'm going to alter the table items to drop. Let's drop system versioning for a moment because we need to reconfigure it. And also I'm going to truncate that table items. This is uh, deleting all the data and uh, resetting the uh, auto increment value. Okay, after that, we're going to add system versioning again. Alter table items. Let me do it like this. Add system versioning. By the way, this is how you would add system versioning to, a, to an existing uh, table. But we are going to also uh, add partitioning. So partition this by system time. And here you could specify some of the uh, the partitions that you want to use, uh, but MariaDB can do it also by default. Uh, it uses uh, some special names I'm going to show you in a moment, uh, and that those are fine for this demo. Uh, in fact, I think, let me show you what happened there. So MariaDB created two partitions. Let's try to find them or show them here. So select partition name, I think it is, from information schema.partitions where table name equals items and you see partition p0 and partition pn this one is going to contain all the historical data and this one is going to contain all the current data and we can see them also in the system layout so let's try to show them here var lib mysql demo and you see now we have two IBD files for the items table. So one is for uh, P0 and the other one is for PN. And you can use any uh, like the names that, that you want here. Like I said, you can specify them uh, after a partition by system name, but uh, this is fine. Just remember, zero is history. This is the current state, the valid data. Okay, uh, and let me show you that this works. So let's insert into items, title, values, by book. These, after executing this, these, uh, MariaDB is going to insert a row in PN, which is the, the, the partition that contains all the current data. So it would go to into this file. Now let's update items set down equals true where id equals one, one row affected. Okay, now after this, uh, the, the current row is gonna be moved to P0, which is the history, and the, the row is gonna be updated in partition N, which is the one containing, again, the current data. And uh, we can see that actually with a select all from items, and we can add partition, and in parentheses, uh, you can specify the name of the partition. So let's go first with the history, right? So this was before we updated the item as done. So you can see it was actually zero. And we can show the current data, which is in partition N. Now that was done. Of course, this query is the same as running 
uh, as running it without the partition clause because it's going to take the current uh, data. So this is a pretty cool feature in MariaDB. Uh, there's much more than you can do with it. For example, you can create many partitions instead of just uh, the two that we see here. You can configure the names. Uh, you can create many partitions in the history part, <laughs> so to speak, uh, uh, so that you divide the, the history uh, further in many, uh, many files, right? Uh, many partitions. Mm, you can even let MariaDB create these partitions automatically. Maybe you want to create one partition every week or every month or every year, or maybe every certain number of rows, let's say, like after one million rows, I want to create a new partition, or maybe after five million rows or whatever you decide. It's... Uh, that would make sense for your uh, uh, use case. Mm, really powerful feature. Check documentation and I'll see you in the next video.